Hey, bro. It's Empire. <laughs> hey, here at EmpireCV.tv, we have a special guest to, to show you. We interviewed Jekyll from the Sac City Rollers last week. The Sac City Rollers will be here on May 4th as part of our mini con. They also have a show that night uh, at the rink that you can go to. Starts about 6 o'clock. So come here, get your free comics, say hi to the girls, go on over to the rink that evening, and watch the bout. Hey everybody, this is Ben with Empire's Comics Vault here to talk uh, with Jekyll from Sac City Rollers on the side of the Bruisers. She's going to be uh, representing here at Free Comic Book Day, May 4th. We're going to have a whole setup for them. Uh, you can meet the players, you can purchase some of their merchandise, as well as meet a bunch of other people and get your free comic books. So uh, Jekyll, welcome to EmpireCV.tv. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Of course. Uh, now, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Sac City Rollers? Uh, Sac City Rollers, uh, awesome team here in Sacramento. Um, we have about actually uh, May 4th, which is also Free Comic Book Day. And we've been telling everyone, come here in the morning, go do the May the 4th, be with you in the afternoon, and then go see you guys in the evening. So Absolutely. It's at six, right? Yes. Perfect. So, okay, so, so tell them what they can expect, because I went to my first game last year, and I wasn't quite sure what to expect, and I ended up walking out loving it. Um... I like to describe it to, uh, in layman's terms, I guess, okay. uh, as football meets NASCAR. <laughs> okay, and that, um, that's a fair assessment, <laughs> yes. So there is a track, we are going around in a circle for the most part, um, and you know, uh, roller derby is unique in the sense that there is offense and defense happening at the exact same time, okay. which um, you know, is not usually happening in the sports world. Uh, you have your set of blockers for each team that's out there, and uh, you have your two jammers, one for each team, okay. and those are the ones who are scoring the points. Okay, um, and you can tell them by, isn't it an armband? We have what we call a helmet panty, which goes oh, on yes, over our okay. helmets, it's got a star on it. Perfect. And uh, we pass all the blockers on the other team, we get the points. Okay. So, um, you know, you've got half that pack working for you and half that pack working against you to get through the pack and, you know, it kind of turns into a little bit of a bar fight sometimes. And, and it's a lot of fun because it's nonstop. Exactly. I mean, it, you're watching these, and uh, it's what 15 minutes, and there's four quarters. Uh, there's two. Two. See, there's I, two I'm halves. <laughs> <laughs> there's two. See, we got a lot of editing to do. There's uh, <laughs> there's two halves at 30 minutes typically. Okay. See, I had the time right. It, yes, I just had it broken up differently. But yeah, it's a lot of fun because you get a really enthusiastic crowd. Yes. Um, it, you got the players, which are enthusiastic, and you guys really put on a good performance. We do. Yes. So, uh, it so very hard. On the six, you will be playing. What are the names of the other two teams? Um, it is the uh, Capital Punishers, which is Sac City Rollers. That's yep. us. Uh, versus the Bay Area Derby Girls, who are from Oakland, so Perfect. the Bay Area. And All right, it'll point. be a good show. You guys mm -hmm. can find them at the rink um, this or May 4th uh, after Free Comic Book Day. So, real quick, you got the Supergirl costume. Yes. So you love roller derby and you love superheroes. I do. I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> and you're part of a costuming group, uh, which is? Uh, West Coast Avengers, yes. Okay, and what kind of stuff do you guys do? We do community events, um, mostly like hospital visits, uh, awesome. open, you know, open charities, uh, Ronald McDonald House events, um, usually things that are community-based. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization. Uh, we're all volunteers. We volunteer our time. So, um, you know, we're... We just go out and try and make people smile. We all are a bunch of nerds who just kind of want to give back to the community doing, you know, doing what we love. Well, perfect. So. Then only one last question. Uh, your name is Jekyll. Yes. Where does that come from? Uh, well, it's a play off of Jekyll and Hyde, which is, um, you know, a classic okay. story. Uh, for me, um, well, it ties into me for a lot of reasons, but, you know, I really like the duality of Jekyll and Hyde. And here's me and my superhero outfit, but of course I go out and... Okay. And, and you've <laughs> got the, the roller derby, and then you've got your and 9 to exactly, 5 at the same time. Exactly. So, um, you know, it, it serves dual purpose for me. Well, perfect. Well, thank you for coming down, and I can't wait to see you guys on the 4th. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Very excited to be here on May 4th. Awesome. Thank you. All right, this week on EmpireCV.tv, we're building up to Free Comic Book Day, which is May 4th. It's this Saturday. We are going to have a mini con. We're going to have a crazy sale. We are going to give out 15,000 plus free comic books. I've got some of them here to show you real quick. You've got a Avatar flip book. You have got Infinity. This one here is building up to some stuff Marvel's going to do that's going to be important in their universe. It really has a movie flair to it as opposed to your typical Marvel feel. So 
Uh, it's another one of the blending of the universes, making it uh, more accessible to everyone. Doesn't mean that they defied continuity or did anything they shouldn't have. It's just the feel of it made me feel like the movie. But it was a good read. Superman reprinting some Donner stuff. I'm sorry, Jeff Johns and Donner. Marvel has some kids stuff. DC has some kids stuff. Thank God there's some kids Batman because the new Batman series is not for kids. We got some strawberry shortcake with a flip Sesame Street. How can you go wrong with Sesame Street? Two Valiant books, uh, two Judge Dredd books. You got 2000 AD, a full 2000 AD and a Judge Dredd book. Uh, we've got some Rust flipped with Mouse Guard. Everybody wants The Walking Dead. We got Aphrodite 9's, uh, the first issue actually is available free comic book day for her new series. So ton of stuff. This isn't even all of it. Come down, take what you want only what you'll read, leave everything else for the next person. So, but aside from that, there are new books this Wednesday as well. We've got the new Carrie book, Suicide Risk. It's a world where heroes are popping up. Uh, the villains outnumber them uh, in a ridiculous number. So the suicide risk, what does that mean? If you've joined the police force, you're a suicide risk because the chances are you're not going to make it. We open up with five super villains tearing up Midtown, robbing a bank, Police force are against them. Only one hero decides to show up. Uh, we get introduced to our main character who is a cop and wants to change these things, wants to uh, get involved more actively outside of the police force, which means somehow acquiring police or uh, superpowers. It was a fun read, really set things up well. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's Carrie. How could you not? Now this one, well, you know what? We should have led into this from Infinity, obviously. Uh, Thanos Rising number two is out. Uh, really beautiful artwork. Last one left off with him as a kid showed him starting to go down a dark path, showed us some things about Thanos we didn't know, showed us why he uh, chose to do certain things. And this one here, we've got somebody guiding him, a young girl uh, kind of pushing him in the direction that she wants him in. Don't know much about her. Uh, then we've also got Thanos performing some really unspeakable acts as he gets into his teenage years, leading uh, down the road to where he becomes in, you know, obviously when he kills off half the universe. This is the one I'm most excited about this week though. 10 grand, it's Straczynski and it is Temple Smith. Straczynski doesn't put out much work. When he does, it is phenomenal. Neither does Temple Smith. You guys know him from 30 Days a Night, most notably from Fell with Warren Ellis. This is dark, it's brutal. We're following somebody who is on the side of good, who is tracking down and disposing of demons. There's a lot more to it, but I can't give you much more than that at the beginning because they start revealing it as it goes on through the first issue and they're supposed to come as shocks. When you get to the end, uh, it was a little depressing, kind of left me wanting to read something a little happier, but it was a darn good read. Let's see what else we got here. Aquaman, I've really been waiting for that one. This is one I've been enjoying and has been moving quite a bit more. You got Lemire on Green Arrow. Uh, Arrow, CW's, 8 p.m. Wednesday nights. <laughs> It's a plug right there. Go ahead and watch. I've never seen it, but I hear it's great. And one of my best friends tells me it's the best show on TV. That might be a bit of an oversell. Um, X-Men Legacy, great book. Peter David and X-Factor. I mean, look at these. All new X-Men is coming out. Uh, that thing just does not stop. You got Superior Spider-Man this week. You know, a lot of people jumped off board when Brubaker left. This has been a really gritty spy book since then. So it's been really good. Unfortunately, it was too little too late. It's not gonna be around much longer. I'm sure they'll just reboot it and put Bendis on it and it'll sell a million copies. We love you, Bendis. Um, Indestructible Hulk, Simonson. I don't know how I feel about this. At the end of the last issue, Hulk actually lifted the hammer. That just seems a bit forced to me. It made it so important that Spider-Man and Cap were able to do it because Spider-Man and Cap, as far as I knew, were the only ones outside of Thor who could lift it. So, I don't know, we'll see. I, I love his art. I love that book, so I will keep going with it. Everyone asked where this was last week. Age of Ultron continues. Uh, we're on to seven, and there's only 10 of them. There's a lot for them to wrap up. Another book that everyone should be reading, the first trade is out. Abnett and Lanning essentially doing the Legion without any, or any editors getting in the way. So although, speaking of that, the last couple issues of Legion have been unbelievable. That book is amazing. If you guys dropped off at any point, if you're at all interested in the Legion, just go back two issues. I believe it was 18 where they started the new story arc. It's incredible. Well worth the read. I'll see you guys on May 4th. Don't forget uh, to give some love to the local artists here. Stop by, see what they have. Uh, take a peek. You might find something you like. Yeah.